today I'm going to talk about lighting design and the role of the lighting designer. The modern lighting designer makes decisions on the atmosphere and the lighting in response to a design brief, a text or a device production. They work as part of a creative team providing one of the many elements that make the show a finished production. It just simply isn't enough to have lights on its own. You need set, costume, actors. These together make a show. I think lighting is a little bit like the drummer in a band. If you sit in a room and listen to the drummer on a band on its own, pretty boring, pretty one-dimensional. However, add the guitar, the bass, the, dr the keys and the vocals, and you have the, all the qualities of a great set of music. I think lighting is very much the same as that. Lighting without the set, the costume and the cast, has no dimension and no depth. Add all of the other theatrical elements and you have the making of a great show, be it theatrical, rock and roll or in the event world. The modern designer has to consider all the variables when creating a lighting design, everything from visibility, safety and cost. Morgan says in his book, Stage Lighting for Theatre Designer, it is the lighting designer's job to interpret the concept through the medium of light and produce the finished lighting scheme on schedule within the resources available and achieving the highest visual aesthetic and ambition possible. What Morgan is trying to tell us is that we have to be creative with light, but we have to interpret this into its technical requirements. They are needed to produce the lighting design. Lighting design is a creative medium that uses technical, practical elements to realise the artistic process. You have, to create, you have to be creative, but you also have to be practical. You have to be imaginative and innovative in your designs, but you often are asked to produce very realism, very real elements within the lighting design. Some people argue that lighting designers should only concentrate on the creative and artistic elements of the, of the medium. Others insist that unlike other mediums, it's imperative that the lighting designer has a good learned background in the technical aspects within lighting, such as electrics and rigging. It simply isn't enough to place the coders on the floor here, but it's imperative that you understand how they plug up in case you put them in the wrong place and we don't know where the dimmers or the cable or the management of it is going to come from. Mark Jonathan, who's a well-known lighting designer in the opera and ballet world, he feels much the same. He says, what excites me about lighting is that it combines art with science. The lighting designer has to convert ideas into light using a technical medium. Scott Palmer, in his book Light, talks of the history of lighting and how lighting design has evolved into the role that we understand and know today within productions. Savando and Sabatini were both architects and Lutherberg was an artist. None of them were lighting designers, yet all three of them made great achievements in developing lighting design in the 15th and 17th centuries. Nowadays, the role of the lighting designer has evolved into one in its own right, whose sole responsibility is to concentrate on the design aspects of the lighting. And we have a team of people around them that look at the practical aspects of it. The production electrician's job is there to realise and make the design practically happen and go up in the air whereas the programmer bears the, bun the burden of the complicated and sophisticated programming involved in using modern lights nowadays. So for those of you that aspire to become a successful lighting designer, I'd like to impart one thing to you, which is how good is a painter if they don't understand the different qualities of paint, if they don't know the difference between watercolour, acrylic and oil paints? A doctor can study books, and they do, for many years on how to be a, um, a good doctor, they can recite every Latin term for every body part, but if they aren't practised in the art of surgery, would you let them operate on you? A lighting designer can be the most gifted design person in the world, but without the fundamental basics on the practical aspects of lighting, they could design something that just simply doesn't work. So my advice to you is don't ignore the basics. Earn your stripes on fit-ups, learn how to rig and to focus, to follow spot, before you head to the heights of the design world. The designer that has spent time with these elements is armed with all the knowledge that he or she needs to create successful lighting designs. Nigel Morgan quotes in his book, Stage Lighting for Theatre Designers, 
three qualities that lighting designers should have. One, a detailed, intimate understanding and imagination of how lighting can be used creatively in play. Two, technical skills to translate ideas into lighting schemes. Three, managerial ability and communication skills to organise him or herself and others. He then goes on to say that the lighting designer must combine an artist's imagination and powers of observation with an engineer's functionalism and understanding of materials with an architect's project management skills. Today I'm just going to look at Morgan's first point, which is understanding of how lighting can be used creatively in play. In the modern world of lighting design, we can express our design potential in many different artistic genres. Each of these over the years has developed their own unique style, and most of them have designers that specialise solely in that field. So let's take the drama and play aspect of things. The text-driven play is often set within a very, very real environment. The light and design is asked to be realistic. In fact, the key to a successful design in a box set play is if you do not notice the lighting at all. The play normally uses the soft light of a Fresnel as the basis of the lighting rig, and the softer, more natural pastel colours of daylight tones and warm straws. Malcolm Ripith and Joanna Town are two really well-known lighting designers in this particular area. Dance. Unlike the drama, the drama of a text-driven play, in dance, light is used to create mood. It's used to create texture and it's used to enhance rhythm. The use of light from the side has come pretty much standard part of a rig plan for a dance. Light is used to enhance the body, shape and form. Unlike the play, we don't always need to see the face and the contrasts and shadows are more interesting and they find common place within a light and design rig. Musical theatre. In musicals, we change from very, very real scenes with dialogue, which often demand the same natural and realistic lighting of text-driven plays. Then we kind of transcend into this kind of madness of <laughs> dancing in song and dance. And that is rather un unnaturalistic, really. The lighting designer often uses follow spots to follow the actor. And that's pretty unrealistic, really. The sense of realism ju leaves during the songs and it's all about dramatic, more fantastic, colourful, kinetic lighting looks. Often they mimic the rhythm or perhaps the mood of the song. Perhaps a sombre or slow song would drive a designer to use maybe blues or purples in hues and colours, whilst a more upbeat number would evoke uses of reds or yellows. Generally, everything in musical theatre is slightly more exaggerated. Quite often, the colour choices are more saturated than the pastel hues that we use in uh, text-driven plays. The first moving light was developed in 1980 by a company called Shoko. The revolution of a fixture that could change colour, size, texture, speed, it all brought a fantastic new dimension to lighting design. The control of all of these parameters meant that lighting designers had so much ch more choice in their lighting rigs. They didn't have to commit one light to a fixed focus in one colour, but one unit could do so many different things within a show. However, along with these advancements came the need for a new level of specialist technician to maintain them and to operate and to control them. The moving light is now commonplace within musical theatre shows, but more predominantly it is used in the world of rock and roll lighting design. The musical theatre world adopts lighting styles from both the drama and play style of lighting and the world of rock and roll and dance. Rock and roll lighting has evolved over the years. From static, simple, pulsing, rhythmic lights in the 70s and 80s, to include the advanced moving lights we now currently have available. We now have control from computer consoles. We have control of the many parameters that we have at our disposal as a lighting designer. Pan and tilt movements, colour, texture and prism effects. Rock and roll lighting is simply just more than illuminating the artist. 
the design in this field has become so spectacular, it is just not about functionality anymore. Nowadays, as a paying customers, we demand high theatrical standards, especially in lighting when we go to see a musical show. It's as much about the lighting and the production values as it is about the music, I would say. The lighting in this area is often very dramatic. Backlight features strongly in the composition and the colours are strong, saturated and the lighting is a, it's a little bit like dance. It flows rhythmically and accentuates the mood of the song. The rock and roll industry typically makes more revenue than the theatrical industry and as a result, this field tends to drive the development of intelligent lights over the years. Manufacturers such as Roby and Martin develop products in response to the needs of the lighting designers and unfortunately they tend to lean towards where the money is so that's why rock and roll tends to drive the development of our, our lights going forward. These different forms of lighting design work with realism, expressionism and abstract design touching on some or all of the above to create the lighting for their performance. How can your lighting tell a story? How can it enhance the performance or create a mood within the space? It's important to decide on the audience member's journey in your show. We use lights to decide where we want the audience member to look. The journey of the show. Do we want them not to see something? Are we trying to mask a scene change? Are we trying to highlight something? Do we actually want them to pull focus and look at this specific area? What time of day is it? Is it morning? Or is it night time? Is it summer? Is it winter? Is it set in the Victorian area? Did they even have electric lights? In which case, you have the impossible task of creating candlelight with electric lights. Location. Are we inside? Are we outside? Do we want our audience member to understand different locations, perhaps? Maybe stage left is a bedroom, which is an interior look. How do we create that interior look? And maybe in scene two, we transition to stage right, which is outside in a garden. How have I made you realise that we're not indoors and that we're now outdoors? Do we want to close down the stage and make it intimate? Or do we actually want it to be large and full? <coughs> we can use lighting to help show how the actor is feeling, enhancing the character's mood, and feeling to help the audience member know what it is that we're trying to gauge from the particular performance. We can use the social stereotyping of colour to help us do that. Red, for example, could be danger, could be love, depends on the context. Uh, blue, maybe, might be sad, sad times, sombre, night time, maybe. We can also use the position of the light as well and the direction to help us sculpt the scenes that we're looking at. We can use backlight to help us sculpt the actor and give that nice glow that you see on me now. If we add to that side light, we would bring in contrast on the face, light and dark. Is it important in this particular scene to see my face? If it is, we might need to bring in some front light to enhance that. Nick Moran, in his book, Performance Lighting Design, spends time showing us how we can use lighting scores and the use of cue synopsises to help us map our lighting ideas in a logical manner. He also goes into great detail about side light and backlight and how you can use that to sculpt scenes. The lighting designer should always have the audience member at the forefront of their mind throughout the design process. They are the customer, they are our end goal. Make sure that your lighting is relevant and considered. Make sure that it complements and works with the other design elements of the show. Make sure that it has the style and design choices for the performance. It's not a lighting show. It's a show with set and costume. So you don't want to detract from those elements by making it all about the lighting. And the last thing I'd like to leave with you is to make sure that you leave Make sure that you go for quality in your lighting and not quantity. That's it. <coughs> Has anyone got any questions?